Así que vamos a empezar eh, con Víctor Lelu, que es el uh, Product Manager de BMW para los modelos M3, M4 para el mercado de Estados Unidos. Well, Victor, thank you uh, and thank uh, BMW in North America for having us here in Road America for the introduction of these uh, two new cars, uh, M3 and M4. And uh, can you please first explain the difference uh, in the name because they used, it used to be one, right? I mean, so can you please go ahead and, and tell us that first? Well, quite simply, the M4 followed the regular 4 Series. As you know, we moved from 3 Series to 4 Series because of a change in approach, particularly aesthetically, and a change in dimensions a little bit over the previous generations. So the M4 simply follows the moniker of the regular car. Yeah, until the 3 is the sedan, the 4 is the coupe. That's exactly that. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, very uh, a lot of history with these cars. I mean, uh, these cars are legendary. They're not, I mean, the, the first one came out, what, in the uh, 80s? That's right, at the end of the 80s, the exact year in uh, the US was 86, 86, 1986 with the uh, first generation um, E30 that back then had a, a four-cylinder engine. They've all been known for four generations to be capable of doing two very paradoxical things on paper, is really being able to be a daily driver, be as easy to use on a daily basis as possible and, and you know, carry... Uh, four adults in comfort, four or five adults in comfort, depending on the body variants with, uh, you know, a large trunk space, but at the same time also be very effective on the track. Yeah. And so uh, all four generations have brought a lot of innovations with them to work in both those directions, and this new generation is no different and carries the torch even further than before. Yeah, but the, the origin for these cars, I mean, the reason why BMW built these cars was to compete, right? That's right, that's right. The very first M3 E30 uh, road car was a, a homologation requirement for to be able to race the yeah. car. So things have changed a little bit today and ever since that first generation the the road car has come first but every single generation has had a very successful uh, history in racing and there is a clear correlation between our racing efforts and our road efforts on on this very particular model on the m3 yeah so um nowadays so you were, were talking about like, how you have to combine those two lifestyles if you want like daily driver and competing uh, it's even more evident in this car because the amount of technology in this car for both things in, in each uh, side of the spectrum, it's pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. It, it goes a long way. And it's uh, like I said, it's difficult to match those two things. But I think the new generation does a good job of that. For instance, the most obvious thing you can think about when you think about a new generation is the fact that it's turbocharged, right? And that turbocharged setup goes a long way into providing a lot more torque than in the past. Yeah. And obviously... That's something that you want on the racetrack in terms of performance. But it also means that a daily use of the car will be that much easier. And, and that turbocharged setup also helps with fuel economy. And we've been able to reduce fuel, fuel consumption by about 20% over the previous generation thanks to this solution. Yeah. So that's just one example. And uh, you went, after the previous generation had an eight-cylinder engine and now we're going back to six. That's correct. We used to have a naturally aspirated V8 on the previous generation and now we have moved back to an inline six architecture, something BMW is obviously very familiar with, except this time we are um, uh, turbocharging it with the, using two small turbochargers. Yeah. And even though the horsepower didn't increase that much, you were mentioning the torque makes the, the difference. That's exactly that. The power is up by 2%. Uh, although in the past it used to sit very, very high in the rev range and it was one point on the, on, on the curve, if you will. Today you have the peak power is between 5,500 RPM and 7,300 RPM. But the biggest change is the torque plus 38%, 406 pound-feet of torque, available from as low as 1,850 RPM. And again, it carries across to 5,500 RPM. So a lot of torque for a very long time. Yeah. Can you talk about the other uh, technologies in engineering, in design, in materials that you use, that BMW used to make this car much lighter? Yeah, absolutely. This is the first generation M car that, lose, that lost weight to its predecessor. So to be able to do that, we had to use lightweight measures anywhere it was possible. One of the obvious applications is the use of carbon fiber. You can see it much more on the roof of the car. We had that on the previous generation coupe, but also on the sedan on this generation. Uh, the strut tower that we use to rigidify the front end of the car is also made of carbon fiber. The drive shaft. The drive shaft is a one-piece carbon fiber part that allows us to lose about 15 pounds, close to 15 pounds. 11.7 uh, pounds. 11.7 pounds, very, exa very precisely. 
uh, and that also helps with the throttle response of the car. And finally, the coupe also features uh, a trunk, which skeleton, if you will, is made of carbon fiber. Yeah. And all that makes for the, the second part of the purpose of this car, making it fast. That absolutely helps. I mean, more power, more torque, less weight. Naturally, the car is considerably faster. Here at Road America, we clocked it about 15 miles an hour faster at the end of the straight. That power delivery comes much sooner than before. The zero to 60 time has now dropped down by about half a second to the previous generation, 4.1 second with the manual transmission on both models, M3 and M4. And if you use the seven speed dual clutch, we actually drop below four seconds at 3.9 seconds. Yeah. And uh, can you talk about, so it comes standard with the manual transmission, and uh, what's the other option, please? So that's correct, a, stand, a standard six-speed manual transmission, now with a rev match function. And as an option, you can use a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission that's inherited from the M5 and M6, but adapted to new electronics for the M3 and M4. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit more about this, because a lot of people, like traditional these people, like to drive manual transmissions. I mean, mm -hmm. they say they're more in control of the car. But, to be honest, the automatic transmission, dual clutch, and all this, with tons of electronics, that's a better option, right? I mean, you can be very good with the manual transmission, but you're never going to be as good as the electronics and the computers. In terms of shift times, it's difficult to be a dual clutch yeah. transmission. I mean, it is pretty instantaneous, and it never... It never stops traction for you. You just keep accelerating flat as you shift gears up, and it shifts between gears very, very fast. So that's why you see this difference in acceleration, uh, in accel acceleration time to the six-speed manual. But to each his own. You know, we're happy we're able to provide a six-speed manual transmission, which we have reworked extensively for this generation. Uh, and at the end of the day, I think the customer knows what he wants. Yeah, exactly. And that's great. I mean, because some manufacturers don't offer manual transmission anymore. I Absolutely. Mean, so that's, that's an advantage. Absolutely. We're for, happy for, to have it. For me and the... Well, Victor, thank you very much. Oh, one final thing. Uh, this car's already on sale. Can you tell us about uh, prices and all this? The car goes on sale at the very end of this month, at the very end of June. Starting price is $62,925 on the M3 sedan and $61,000. Uh, uh, where am I? I'm lost in my number. $65,125, excuse me, on the M4 coupe. Uh, and that includes a particularly enhanced uh, standard equipment with now, like I said, a lot of technology, a lot of carbon fiber, but also uh, elements such as the navigation system, the power heated front seats or carbon fiber trim inside. So a very well equipped car for a small increase over the past generation. And uh, one final question. The previous generation had the orange uh, color, paint color, and this, uh, the M3 and the M4 have special colors for this year? For now, they do not for the very early launch, but as of this fall, you will be able to um, order them with um, special request paints from our BMW individual program. Uh, we'll be happy to look into anything that uh, our customers may want to do, and we'll get back to them with feasibility. Okay, great. Because this blue one, we're sitting in the M3 right now, is a blue one, I thought it was a special color, and then especially the M4. Uh, with that, uh, what's the official color? And uh, It's green, uh, lime green, metallic something, uh, I don't know. This one is called Austin Yellow Metallic, in keeping with the tradition of naming our colors, our M colors after famous red tracks. Track. Yeah. So we have Yas Marina Blue on this M3 sedan, and Austin Yellow Metallic on the M4 Coupe. And we're happy to be bringing bold colors back into the color program of the M3. Uh, I've been known for that over the years. Yeah, they look beautiful. Thank you very much, Victor, for My all the information. And uh, we're going to go out there and uh, try to drive under the rain today, but we'll see how, how, we, how we do. I know that car is going to do fine, but I don't know about me. Should be <laughs> fine. Have fun. Thank you, Thank Javier. You. Yeah, Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting. Thank you.